Okay, here is a really topical microeconomic essay plan, a market failure question to do with air pollution and policies to control. Could well feature this kind of question on the exam. Uh, London has just brought in its own ultra low emissions zone. If you if you don't have an ultra low emissions vehicle, a light van, a car, for example, then you will be charged an extra £12.50 a day if you drive into the area. The question we'll work through in terms of our plan is as follows. Using your own knowledge, assess the case for and against imposing an extra charge for vehicles in cities for all non-ultra low emission vehicles. Big topical issue. Major study published in the medical journal The Lancet a couple of months ago found that 4 million children globally every year develop asthma uh, as a result of air pollution from traffic. They're now estimating that the number of people killed from air pollution um, is greater than the number of people attributable to the effects of smoking. 8.8 .8 million compared to 7.2 million, arguing that air pollution is cutting on average 1.5 years off people's average life expectancy. And in terms of the European Union, big report published by the European Environment Agency looked at premature deaths caused by air pollution. Particulate matter, high concentrations were the most common killer. Uh, over 400,000 premature deaths in the European Union in 2015, including over 30,000 in the UK. So a big, a big topical issue. Highly likely to feature as some sort of exam question if they want to test your understanding about the economics of air pollution and what you can do about it. In London, air pollution, according to the King's College Fund study, uh, contributes to more than 9,000 premature deaths each year. So what's the argument for and against putting a charge on cars that are not uh, ultra-low emissions? Let's build the case. Now, of course, in an essay question, we're looking to build two analysis points, then do it and evaluate as we go, and then a final reason conclusion. My first KAA point is to go straight away to the argument that a ultra low emissions zone and a charge for vehicles which don't meet that criteria is effectively a polluter pays tax, a Pigouvian tax. Air pollution is a negative externality, actually from both production and consumption. So things like light vehicles, delivery vans, motorcycle delivery riders, people just consuming and using their cars. Negative externality creates social costs, such as increased risk of dementia, damaged lung development in children, we have application there. Introducing an ultra-low emission zone, such as London, can be effective because it increases the private cost of using more polluting vehicles. This should help to reduce the number of cars in the zone, which will then curb external costs. The justification is this helps to internalise the externalities and lower the quantity of traffic per hour towards a social optimum. And of course, money raised from this zone can be hypothecated or ring-fenced to help fund an increase in capital spending, for example, on electric buses. So it's a classic make the polluter pay argument. The counter argument, the evaluation point, is that £12.50 a day uh, per vehicle is potentially going to have a regressive effect particularly on poorer households, many of whom, well, are not well served by public transport, which is expensive anyway. Um, they, they have to take their kids to school or they have to take their, their children to a hospital appointment. And in particular, if you're on low incomes, you can't afford to upgrade your car to an ultra low emissions vehicle like an electric car. You don't have the budget to do it. Uh, linked to that, of course, is the case that public transport is pretty much close to full to bursting limited capacity so workers particularly low wages will be particularly affected by this by this charge <coughs> Pardon me. my second point so now build the second analysis point uh, that taxes are a useful nudge they're a hard nudge to drive investment so if you bring a, an ultra low emission zone in and charge vehicles which don't meet the criteria that is seen as a hard behavioral nudge and it's designed to change the behaviour of big vehicle users. So, for example, taxi fleets or logistics companies, company cars, etc., they may well decide this is the moment to consider grading their investment spending 
to buy or lease new vehicles which emit less pollution and are also more fuel efficient. Perhaps shift away from diesel and petrol cars towards hybrids and fully electric. That extra investment spending itself, of course, you could argue is an injection of demand into the circular flow. And it's going to fast forward demand for and supply of the associated infrastructure such as charging points. You can argue this second second point is that, that this charge is a kickstart to investment and an upgrading of, of uh, the vehicle stock in the UK. The counterpoint, the downside, the evaluation argument in the opposite direction is that many small businesses are going to face higher costs. It's going to become a variable cost for them. It's going to lead to lower profit and perhaps fewer jobs. So that some people will be negatively affected. And also there may well be more effective ways of addressing air pollution instead of just charging polluting vehicles. So alternatives including banning vehicles that use dirty fuels, uh, having uh, car-free days. So Paris has brought in car-free days. So too has Edinburgh. Amsterdam uh, is on the point of banning petrol and diesel vehicles from its city centre by 2030. Uh, they're phasing it in with the oldest, least efficient, most polluting cars being banned first. Um, in London, all single-decker buses are now zero emission. All new taxis must be hybrid or electric. Electric. So the argument here is that, in fact, instead of charging people, change the regulations, change the choice architecture. Instead of a hard nudge as a tax, change the default uh, through regulation. You will need to support your answer with a diagram. The classic diagram to draw would be an externalities diagram. Crucially, of course, you want to be showing where marginal social cost diverges from the marginal private cost, leading to a level of output, Q1, which is higher than the social optimum, Q2. Now, you then develop the diagram, if you wanted to, by putting in the tax diagram. So if, you, if you're putting a charge in, you're hoping to increase the marginal private cost of people using older vehicles, polluting vehicles, and that should cause a contraction up the demand curve towards Q2. And of course, you could also show the revenue that that tax might, might generate. So use a good externalities diagram in your answer. Very important to get the higher evaluation marks to come to a final conclusion, to come to a reasoned comment based on what you've argued. So here's my attempt. The causes of air pollution in cities are complex and no one policy on its own is likely to make a sufficient difference to what is becoming a national emergency. This is the argument oftentimes in evaluation. You can say, well, here's a policy proposal, but actually I think we need a combination of policies to make a real difference to the problem. Uh, environmental economists are calling air pollution the silent killer. Lots of premature deaths. My argument is, although an ultra-low emission zone might work, worth trying perhaps, alternative policies are likely to be more effective in the long run and perhaps less regressive on low-income families. So you could subsidise the cost of public transport to reduce the number of vehicles. I think in Holland they're thinking about offering some free public transport as an experiment. Stricter standards on all new vehicles. So you basically really ramp up the regulations on the level of particulate filters from exhaust and things. Higher parking fees in the city. Uh, promote electric vehicle car share schemes. Banning certain types of cars and vans. So in other words, you need a range of alternative policies. The market failure is enormous. Strong intervention is needed. And whilst better information to consumers about the consequences of their, of their decisions can bring about soft behavioural change, I'm going to argue here that tougher regulations are needed to change the cost-benefit analysis that people and businesses make when deciding whether or not to use their car. So regulation, I think, is the key here. In particular, much stricter standards for all new vehicles, insisting, um, indeed, I think as Holland has done, they're going to ban all petrol and diesel vehicles by 2030. In the UK, the plan is to do that 10 years later. Loads of topics, loads of concepts you can cover in the answer. It comes to externalities, internalisation, intervention, risk of government failure, lots you could talk about. But I think this is the kind of question on pollution that could well feature in an exam.
Okay, hopefully you found that useful.